thing. Uh, today our subject is our competition. If we don't know who our competition is, you know, how are we advertising? How are we going about getting people in? How are we um, trying to talk those people into joining? You know, how are we doing our marketing? And most of us uh, uh, know this because it's just part of our system, the speech I give for that. It's uh, oh, whenever I uh, have a new affiliate, I send them you know, a package of, hey, here's how we do things and here's why. So hopefully you know our competition is the big box gyms. Okay, it's not other martial arts schools. Martial arts schools don't have many adults. Adults aren't looking for martial arts. Adults are running away from martial arts, um, which is sad. They just don't want many things how long it takes to perfect, they don't want the discipline, you know, adults uh, nowadays just, just aren't into that. Um, where are all the adults flocking? The big box gyms. Uh, those places are crazy. They can have tens of thousands of uh, members in, in one gym. So that's who we're competing against. Okay, again, like I always tell my affiliates and prospective affiliates, if you ask a thousand people in your community who wants to learn to punch and kick correctly, maybe 50 of them raise their hand. If you ask that same 1,000 people who wants to learn or who wants to lose 10 pounds, 950 of them raise their hands. So we're absolutely competing for the same people that the big box gyms are. And who are they competing for? Basically every adult. You know, I guess especially we think between 18 and 35. Um, so that's a pretty giant market in, in, in our towns. Rather than a market that wants martial arts ages 18 to 35, which is very small, we want a market that wants to lose 10 pounds 18 to 35, which is, which is huge. Um, how do we market against them? We certainly charge more, okay, but we want to do several things um, to make it look like you know, the value's there, that it's worth paying more for us. Make sure that you're telling people, you know, when you're talking to, to people, um, that you're not really learning anything at a big box gym. Okay, they are basically, uh, I don't know, what is it, treadmills. I've been walking since I was one year old. You know, we, want, we are teaching people things that can save their lives, can save their families' lives. You know, this is the things they need to hear as you're trying to, talk, uh, as you're trying to market to them and get them to sign up. Um, the next thing that we want to hit them up with is that it, big box gyms, they, they really don't want you to be there. If everybody showed up that they signed, uh, they wouldn't be able to handle them all. Okay, the reason they charge so little is that they think that you won't notice that charge coming out of your account every month. Um, you'll just let it go. Oh, it's only 20 bucks a month. Okay, so you'll never cancel. And plus, they're pretty good about locking people in. If you sign for 12 months, you can bet you're going to pay for 12 months. But truly, really, that's why they don't charge much. They don't expect you to show up. They hope you don't show up. You know, we, we tell our people that we're talking to, to to sign up, it's like, well, what kind of a business plan is that? Why would you go to a place that their whole goal is that you don't show up, that you just pay them monthly? Where well, we are very family oriented, but we certainly, and, and you know this from the system talk, we talk to everybody, every every class, we greet them, we shake hands, we let them know that we're glad that we're there. That made me so happy, uh, even as we grew to six, seven hundred members, I was still hearing people say, oh, this is like family, people care, that's music to our ears. So we want to beat them that way, we certainly want to outdo them with that. Uh, but then one thing that we also like to tell them is, hey, it's like getting that personal trainer, but not paying that personal trainer cost. So, you know, what are we charging at our gyms? $100 a month. Personal trainers, I don't know what they're getting. A couple hundred a month, depending on how many times you see them. And all those box gyms have those people. I mean, they're they're like hawks. They, they just want you to do their personal training, their, per, their private personal training, because, uh, you know, that's basically how they're getting paid. They're working for the gym, but they're only getting paid for the commission of doing all those, that personal training. So tell them it's like personal training um, without that cost. You know, we're $100 a month, that's $200 a month, and you're getting people who care about you, you're getting a good workout, and again, you're learning something that could save your life. Um, rules in our gyms, what are we mandating? This is a, oh, especially when I go into martial arts gyms, I gotta get them to let go of some things. Um, it's not a dojo. They're certainly not going to be bowing, calling you sir. Um, they don't do that at the big box gyms. Why would I want to put that hoop there? Um, that's going to make people uncomfortable. They're not going to join. Okay. Again, this is why um, they're getting so many people in those big box gyms. It's you come in and you work out. You have fun. Clothing. They wear t-shirts and shorts and gym shoes. That's what we wear at our gyms. I know a lot of crowd gyms have a specific t-shirt. Or even the old school crowd gyms, you had to have a specific t-shirt and those nylon pants that I couldn't stand. Again, the big box gyms aren't making you buy $100, $200 worth of clothes that you have to wear to class. 
Why would we do that? Again, it's another hoop to make people jump through to want to join your gym or, or to feel comfortable joining your gym. Um, I'm, I'm against all that stuff. As long as they got sleeves on their t-shirts and there's not profanity on it, that's cool with me. <laughs> t-shirt and shorts, that's what I wear to a gym. Uh, we get to our schedule. Um, here's where they kind of got something over us and we'll kind of talk our way around that here in a minute, but they're open all day long. Um, I tell, I've had a few crop gyms that against my advice went ahead and were pretty much open all day. It was kind of an open gym. They had classes in the evening, maybe a class at noon. Open gym's a, a mistake. You're not going to make any more money. More people aren't going to join because you're open and they can come in and work out whenever they want. Uh, if you do that, you got to start putting equipment in your gym anyhow. And that's a no-no. We're competing against the big box gyms, but we certainly don't want to look like them. If we start putting uh, weights and, and benches and, and a few machines and a treadmill, we're not going to hold up compared to them. They've got millions of dollars worth of equipment, which is kind of cool. We've got zero overhead. But as soon as we start putting a few pieces of equipment in there, we're going to look pretty bad. We're going to look like we got dumpy stuff and not nearly as many much as they do. So don't do that. We like the bear look, the, the gym look, the, the CrossFit look. Okay, we don't need equipment, and it's a, it's a mistake to put equipment in your gym. Uh, and again, that sitting around all day having to have staff there, you're not signing any more people than if you would just have your evening classes like we do at our gyms. Basically, with that time you're sitting on your butt there because you have an open gym, uh, you could be out marketing. I mean, my gym um, managers, when I owned a gym, during the day they were supposed to be out marketing, getting people in, uh, passing out flyers, whatever, doing demos, whatever it was that we expected them to do. So again, just sitting on your butt with an open gym all day long, um, to me, is a mistake. Now, we can certainly talk about morning classes and, and you know, lunchtime classes. Uh, to me, it's a mistake when you first open a gym just to add all that stuff. Okay, they're not going to be very full. There's nobody coming to those right off the bat. And a class of two just looks sad. You're not going to sell anybody. They're not going to think, oh, this is the place to be. There's two people in their training. Add that, at that lunchtime class a couple of times a week after you've grown a bit, after people have asked for it, after people need it, after you've got it, I don't know even 100 members, then maybe you start adding two lunch classes. Morning classes, eh, maybe. Maybe if you're going to go after the CrossFit crowd. Um, again, we're not a CrossFit gym. We're a Krav Maga gym that has CrossFit, that has cardio MMA. Um, I don't know, just in Central Ohio, I think I saw there's 24 CrossFit gyms now. I mean, I don't want to compete against that. I want to be the place to come for Krav Maga. That also has some pretty good cardio training. Um, the schedule, if you can sit here, uh, to me, the perfect schedule, if you only have one room, is to give people, brand new people who just signed up, something to come to uh, every single day, Monday through Thursday evenings and Saturday mornings. Um, again, if they join a gym, they don't tell them, well, you can come Tuesdays and Thursdays for this one hour. They don't do that. Right off the bat, you'll have people, well, I can't make one of those days anyhow because of this or that or that, and it's a hard sell. If you've got something that they can come to, uh, and even two and three things a night they can come to, then you're starting to look more like uh, the box gyms as far as, hey, they can come any evening after work, they can come any time after work. Again, what I've always kind of shot for is at 545, we've got a Cardio MMA. This is Monday through Thursday. 615, we've got a Krav 1. 715, we've got a CrossFit or an XFit or whatever you're doing with that. Uh, one night a week, maybe, if you've got only one room, you wouldn't have a Cardio MMA, you'd have a, a, an intro. Uh, Saturday mornings, pretty much the same thing. 915 is the Cardio MMA. 10 o'clock, the Krav Level 1. 11, uh, the CrossFit or again the XFit, whatever, whatever you're calling it, CrowdFit. Um, that, they can come any night of the week that way. They can stay for three classes if they want. They can hit that cardio MMA half hour long class and get the heck out of there if that's what they need that night. Now if you have a second room, good for you, then you can run a couple things to, at the same time. You can have a CrossFit class while the Krav's going on. Uh, eventually you're going to need level two and level three classes, so you've got that option. Um, so having a couple of training rooms uh, is fantastic. You can really just, that's when you start putting in that cardio, or the, the MMA class, the BJJ class, boxing class, um, Muay Thai class, you know. But if you've got one room, you've got one room. You just got to figure out how to move around that, maybe how to add things, especially when you start needing the upper level crowd classes. You got to maybe shove them a little closer together and just, and just get over that. But again, we want something um, every day of the week, and we want more than one choice. Okay, adding a... Adding a schedule like that, it, it takes care of one of the biggest excuses is, oh, I don't have the time, or, you know, I can't make that one night, and I can only come to anyhow, so that's a waste. You, you really take that away. Again, the gyms, the big box gyms don't have that, uh, you know, here, here's the two times you can come this week. The big box gyms are open all the time. 
Um, got any questions at all on that, certainly shoot me an email, call me. Um, uh, but keep in your mind with your marketing, your advertising, everything that you're doing, uh, that's who we're competing against. Those are the people we want. Those people that are flocking to those places. Uh, our whole job, the reason that we advertise, the reason for our website, our whole job is to get those people that we're going to go walk on a treadmill to come for our, our intro. We blow them away with the intro. They go to a class right after the intro. At the end of that, they're huffing and puffing, thinking that was fun. I hit things. This is awesome. So that's that's kind of a you know our whole marketing plan. Grab those people that we're going to go to to the gym. Let them see how much cooler, how much more fun the stuff is that we're doing. How much more we care about people. Uh, and truly, uh, I guess our advertising has always been. Uh, and we've tried everything over the years. Basically, the things that are worth the money are the TV commercials, uh, which are a lot cheaper than you would think, and uh, billboards. And I was just thinking today, you know what, where have I seen the big box gyms advertising? And basically, it's those two things. You know, we kind of came about that on our own, and yet, these places with, I don't know, mil millions of dollars for marketing, they've come up with the same thought. Um, basically, billboards and TV. We don't recommend a whole lot else to put money into. Now, there's a lot of free things out there. You know, our snipe signs and our our Craigslist and all that kind of stuff. But again, um, we want to be like as far as how they're advertising, how they're marketing, how they're getting people in the door. Be like the big box gyms, but don't be like them with all that millions of dollars of overhead, with all that equipment, um, with hoping you sign people and they never show up. Um, we want to, uh, again, compete against them, um, but do it smartly. You know, they've got, who knows, to pay their monthly bills, maybe they need I don't know, 8,000 members just to pay their monthly payroll and all the overhead. Well, we're so fortunate. I mean, truly, we're probably making more money uh, as a gym owner with two or 300 members than they are with 8,000 because we've got no overhead. You know, we're charging them much more for a better product. Um, so, again, hit me up with any questions on that, and I will talk to you next month.